Ellie, let me ask you a question. Yeah, fire away, dude. What? Fire away, dude. Oh. <laughs> yes or no? Finding the right hair color for you, Allie, yeah. can be a challenge. Uh, what color is my hair right now? Burgundy. Yeah. Was that on purpose? No. Did I need to use e-salon? Yes, you did. Oh, I fucked it up. Oh, wait. <laughs> you can scratch oh. that. No, I it's miss- great. E-salon offers professional grade. <laughs> Leave that in. <laughs> completely personalized hair color that's created just for you and delivered right to your door. Allie, you fucking need this. I need it so much. This is the last time I will color my hair without taking the steps to get the right color. I grabbed a color off the shelf. It was the wrong color. My hair is maroon now. Don't do it. Allie, do you love questionnaires? Yes. Here's a hair questionnaire. Upload your photo and a personal colorist will formulate your individually blended color from over 15 thousand pigments oh my god i know i need e-salon in a time machine to go back to yesterday (laughs) totally well they've got you covered there's a hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed if you're not happy ally oh god i need with your color it will give you a free reformulation or refund i think anything's better than what i did to myself before you look cute thanks dude but you know what? I like that the color doesn't fade. Like they have the grays covered. Because we get, I get some grays every once in a while. I mean, at 23 years old, I our know. gray is like pretending to start to come in. I know. It's probably because we're such big thinkers. We're so young. So you can visit esalon.com slash slumber party, all one word. And do that. You get 50% off your first order. So that's 10 bucks for your personalized hair color, which is crazy. Because the last time I got my hair colored in a salon, it was like $180. Dude, you can do it your freaking self. I've been doing it my freaking self for years and years. Yeah, I just, I really got the wrong color. So I need to use eSalon. You get 50% off your first box at eSalon.com slash slumber party. So go do that. Don't don't be an Allie Ward. Send us photos too. Hashtag it at, I don't know, Allie in Georgia. Let's see your hair. Yeah, just tag us in it on Instagram. Let's see your pictures. Let's do it. I want to look at your hair. Bye. Listen, you shouldn't have to stretch your budget to buy jeans with a little give. High-end denim can cost hundreds of dollars, but bargain brands don't offer the same level of style and comfort. Yeah. You got you can't get some jeans that cost you hundreds of dollars and no. like have to do a juice cleanse to get into them. <laughs> totally. So Distilled, spelled D-S-T-L-D, they've revolutionized the fashion industry with their timeless luxury grade denim. So you get jeans that would normally cost you hundreds starting at just 65 bucks. Yeah. They eliminate these crazy markups because they refuse to work with middlemen. Refuse. They ship directly to you for free and guarantee the fit or they'll send you a new pair until they're perfect. Distilled jeans are built to last and will be a staple in your closet for years. They also have a bunch of fall jackets so if you're like into a classic denim or you want like a bomber jacket you can just expect the same level of quality okay and so for a discount go to dstld.com slash feral and you'll get ten dollars off your first order that's dstl wait d.com slash feral for ten dollars off bye thanks bye Georgia? Allie. Hey. What is this? This is Slumber Party. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Who are you? Okay, okay. I think I'm Allie. I'm Uh, Georgia. I was yesterday. I think I am. I'm pretty sure. Um, Who's our guest today? (gasps) Allie and Georgia are our guests today. Solo episode! So exciting! Uh, Hey! Um, How was your week? We're just going to talk and see how this goes and let it kind of... Um, my week... Uh, oh, you fine. had a shit week. I had a pretty shitty week. <laughs> and it's only, what, Tuesday? It's yeah. fucking Tuesday, and I had a pretty shitty week. How shitty was your week, Elvis, Georgia? my beloved cat, had to go to overnight to the emergency vet. I got a fucking UTI. Hey. Uh, it's just been fun for it's me. It's P-probs. Yep. It's mother-son P-probs. That's right. That's right. Uh, Do you oh. guys get to take the same drugs? I don't know. For P-probs? I, yeah, they, they suscri- prescribe me catnip, so... <laughs> I guess so. How was your week? Um, I'm not done talking about Elvis. Oh. How are, can you give us an update on how he's doing? Yeah, I know, but I think his that kidney levels know. were fucked up. Go to Elvis and Mimi at, on Instagram and you'll learn more and get the scoop. And he's just my, I'm obsessed with him and he's my darling 
angel. He wasn't doing so good. And then you took him to the vet and then he was doing real good. Yeah. Do you know that I don't pray to God, but I kind of pray to God that he would be okay. Ah. That's how much I love him. I don't even believe in God. <laughs> Did you? Um, but my psychiatrist told me I need to be more spiritual. So I was like, here, I'm going to start here with begging that my cat doesn't die, which I know is like the stupidest thing to pray for. And it's like there's like people have war in their country. But right. Um. A loved one is worthwhile, though. Yeah. What is, what is life without love? Mm-hmm. What is love without a cat? Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, do you believe in life after love? It's a great question, right? and I'm glad you shared that. <laughs> I wish we could auto tune that. I wish we could go back <laughs> when your um when your psychiatrist says you should believe in God. Does she just mean like you should throw out good vibes? I think throwing out good vibes you, is good. You need to believe. You should believe in God. He I'm says like you need to figure out a spiritual belief so that. You don't feel like there's no point to life. I mean, that's not a that's not bad advice. Oh, I think it's great advice. Right. I think it's great. I think he's right. I just need to work on it. You just say, "Dear Jehovah, check out those pee props." I believe in a, a cross-eyed Siamese cat named Elvis that was sent to me f- for some fucking reason because <laughs> then what my life is better and maybe it makes me a good person that that cat loves me and that I found him and we found each other. And I guess if your cat hated you. Would that make you a bad person? I don't. People whose cats hate, who hate, people who, right? D- you know what I mean? They're no. shitty. <laughs> that wait, that wasn't a sentence. If cats though. don't like you, right? As a whole, you're probably doing something wrong with your life. What if it's just a feral cat? That's fine. It's but just it's like, like I'm don't know why I'm inside again. If you go to people's, oh shit! I didn't turn my phone on. God damn, Georgia! Is that Elvis texting you to Elvis. be like, I gotta take a piss? Um. If, if as a whole you're like yeah I go I cats never like me I'm like you, right something's wrong with you that's you shouldn't be sharing that right what if you're a dog that's okay what if you're another cat and nobody likes you or, hey what'd you learn this week I don't know <laughs> uh what did I learn this week we I learned... always start with one thing we learn but this whole episode right, might right, be right. things we learn fuck that right just... you guys this is a mellow we're rolling mellow free today. form this is a free form you know like anything goes. I'm lying on the floor. I'm very tired. And I'm getting up at 3 in the morning. I have a doctor's appointment at 8.30 tonight. What? What kind of weird doctor is that? Why? Are because you getting... I think you're... Is it like in a parking lot? It's in a It's in a <laughs> discotheque. Is that weird? Yeah. Just drink this solution. Just... Uh, the nurse is going to go ahead and hand you some short shorts to change into. And we never saw Allie again. No, I'm going to some endocrinologist that like has night hours because he's a researcher. I don't know. He's supposed to be good. What does an endocrinologist do? Um, it just looks at your hormone levels. Because I went to, I got really sick. I had bronchitis, and I went to the uh, urgent care, and they're like, "Oh, your heart rate and blood pressure are those of a corpse." That's weird. Well, we already know your hormone levels are really high. So hey, we let them know. Can I? I'm just gonna check your hormones. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah, it's gonna be great. They're gonna figure out why my heart beats like uh, an Olympic athlete, but I'm not an Olympic athlete. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I'm going in the late and then we have to get up early. But what I learned this week is that moose, mm-hmm. this is the second time I've had a moose fact. Mm. Moose are seen typically mm-hmm. du- dusk and dawn around bogs and on the side of the road. Remind me what a bog is. A bog is like brackish, marshy water. Right. Got it. Um, I love a bog. Sure. I what love a, a bog. smell, what? though. They smell terrible. They're just full of rot, and but I love a bog. Why do, why do moose chill near bogs? They are so salt-starved <gasps> that they come to the side of the road because there's salt on the side of roads Whoa. from all the ice melting, from melting ice. Yeah. And then also the marshy bog plants are high in sodium, so they just have like wicked munchies for sodium. Why are they sodium-starved? Because in the winter, they couldn't get a lot. Wow. So they're just like, everything's frozen over. So I learned this in a binder uh, in a cottage in Maine. You know how they have like visitors binders oh, yeah. and they're like, they're like, there are 68 lighthouses in Maine, the tallest of which. So I just was leafing That's through that. incredible. Just trying not to watch um, Trump on TV by reading oh, Moose Fact. Tell me about it. He's going to be our next president. We're all, everyone's, he's joking. He's everyone's not. joking. No, he's right? not. He's got it. Someone's, he, so here's what's going to happen. This is going to put money on it. Okay he's gonna run and run and then like a couple months before the election he's gonna get like air quotes shot 
He's going to get fake assassinated and then he's going to live on an island for the rest of his life. And then we're going to find out about it in 25 years. He's it's going to be, be great. Right. Like, yeah. I feel like I woke up in the middle of the night like I'm a little kid. And there's something under my bed, except Trump's going to be president. No, it's Trump. And he's talking about your bleeding lady holes. Oh, did you hear that? Yes. He's talking about bleeding lady he's holes. Just a piece of shit. And he nobody himself. thinks he's OK. I don't want to talk to my mom about this. I do don't not talk wanna... to your mom about it. No. Well, his, Israel, his views on Israel. Oh, yeah. oh fuck you. Mom. I don't want to. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I don't want to talk to your mom about it. <laughs> nobody wants to talk to my mom about politics. I really don't. Your mom called you last night. Oh, yeah. She was drunk. My mom called me at 1030. I was at Vince's birthday party. And, right. you know, like when your parents call you past like whatever time, you're like, well, uh -huh. either grandma's dead or yes. you're drunk. Yes. So I was like, I didn't answer it. I left to go to voicemail. And then I listened to it. And it was like, grandma's fine. She's my mom's drunk. Grandma How is still 104 we... years old. And mom is still drunk. How is your grandma's urinary tract? Who the fuck knows? I'm going to guess it's fine. Yeah. I'm going to guess it's A-OK. -okay. Yeah. I think it's pretty dope that you've got a 104-year-old grandma. Me too. There are sequoias that are like, dang, <laughs> I want to live that long. <laughs> um, what else did you learn? Okay. What I learned is that it's, in I read some stories, this is a probably a bad idea, how dangerous it is to have your feet on the dashboard when you're in the car. Oh, no. So everyone, I want I want to make a fucking public announcement. Okay. Don't and I this you know me I fucking love having my feet on the dashboard like that's my yeah. chill zone. Don't put your feet on the dashboard anymore. That's your crumple zone. Is that what it is sh the moment that the airbag goes off. Right, you're <gasps> just destroyed. Really? And I read these stories of people who were like the accident would have like nothing would have happened. Like the driver got a hundred stitches and the girl is like has brain extensive brain damage. She's, da -da 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 -da. She's just, just a, like a pile of ground beef with hair. All because the the um airbag went off and her f knees flew into her through face. her face right that so. sounds can i tell you something yeah that sounds so painful can, can i just can i postulate something what do you think about i bet that it hurts valley? i think it hurts i just i i'm, I'm not a scientist but also you shouldn't really put your chair back either but oh, just really? you guys i please don't put your feet on the dashboard anymore you love putting your feet maybe on the we'll dashboard. save one person's face Save your this. faces, you guys. Or your feet can get pushed up through the windshield. Ew. Yeah. That's not cool. It's Where were you reading this story? Up. I just saw it on my fucking Facebook feed. As I read every fucking story that I ever read, I saw it on my stupid Facebook feed. On your Facebook feed. Have you, you know what I love? Can I say one thing that I yeah. love that I actually don't love? I find it very hilarious. Mm. Is when I've been seeing a lot of, all right, guys, clean in house. If you don't make the cut, sayonara <laughs> and you're like well if you defriended these people they wouldn't see this post <laughs> and chances are like they don't care yeah i i can't there's not a thing you are probably the only person who if you unfriended me on facebook it would i would be butthurt <laughs> i think you were just anyone i'm like who even cares i don't even unfriend ex i don't even unfriend your ex-boyfriends yeah who i just don't like as a whole wait are you friends with any of my ex-boyfriends i think i've finally been like oh my god i don't need to follow you anymore and unfriended them that's smart yeah you should do it too i think i unfriended your ex-fiance like immediately yeah, yeah, yeah. no i know you like did. the first day he took a duffel bag out of your apartment i was like oh, bye -bye. <laughs> i don't know why i felt like i had to do it in like solid like not a, i didn't have a huge problem with him yeah but i just felt like i had to be like you're gone like those people that wear like team aniston shirts like she doesn't give a shit but you know something i hate about um online people writing shit online too and i've told you this and i just want everyone to say to not do this anymore what? when someone's like i need the three best places to eat cupcakes in la and then they write <gasps> go <laughs> go all right guys best place to eat a fucking thing go Fuck you. Don't fucking tell me what to do. You know what I love about that? What? Is I love in that pregnant pause that they picture a bunch of their, <gasps> quote, well. followers lined up at a starting line being like, she's going to love my Oh, my God. She's going to love my Got to tell gotta her. Bang, go. Oh, my God. I'm going. Go. Go. Um, do you uh, have any suggestions on where to buy a couch? Oh, everyone email Alley couch suggestions. This couch has got to go, dude. Oh, this I is, hate this my is couch. being held up by fucking farts and a dream. <laughs> You're the one sitting on it, Georgia. I'm farting on it. That's how I know. <laughs> I actually have a separate crumple zone where I fart in the closet. <laughs> do you put your butt in the closet and fart? No. You still do that sometimes. You'll walk over to the screen door and just turn and fart out no. the screen door. Are you serious? Do you appreciate it? I farted into the closet before when I didn't want him to hear it, yeah. 
God, I'm telling too much right now. No, we're just, we're going for it. Yeah. It's an unleashed fury. <laughs> like my it's, farts. You're, it's an exploded airbag right now. Um, I think that if there's another human being in the same structure as me, it is physically impossible for me to fart. Yeah, that's fair. I'm just like, the, my whole body, there's like something in my parasympathetic nervous system. I think I've heard system. you fart like twice, and it was like, you were drunk and it was a joke. <laughs> And it was like the funniest fart because it was like, oh, that's not a fart, dude. Oh, no. We've known each other for eight years. Yeah. Oh, and I'm gosh. trying to recall like a total recall farting. Okay, this is so gross. And then we're going to get off this topic. Go. This one time. Go. Go. <laughs> this one time we were going somewhere. We hastily walked the car. You, you waited until you got into my car to fart. And I was like... <laughs> What are you doing? I don't remember that. You were like, oh, finally, I had to do this so badly. And I was like, so you waited until you were in an enclosed space? Because I think we were walking away from a, like a meeting and we were in like vintage dresses. And we're like, that went so well. That went great. And like, I was like, are they waving goodbye at us? I don't want to just like blow my dress up in the back by farting. I think that's the last. I think you admonished me so much for that. And I was I, like, oh, yeah, that's so awful that I stopped <laughs> farting around you. Just like you're like, ah, we're alone in an eight <laughs> cubic feet of space. How, I stopped farting around you, though. I've been really good about it. I think you've been better. How yeah. are your burps these days? Better. My stomach issues are getting better. Hey. Um, OK, what's another thing you hate or learned or love? We're sorry, you guys, that we're we're cramming this solo in before our guest comes for the next one because we've been traveling a lot. And we've gotten no, some don't lovely. Don't tell them that we want to fucking do this. Well, we want to do this, but I'm just saying that we we're just doing this loosey goosey. Yeah, you That's... know, my mom used to say the term use loosey goosey mm -hmm. when uh, I think when she was talking about like a woman of questionable morals. Ew. And it always reminded me of someone who wasn't wearing a bra that just had like loosey gooseneck boobs, <laughs> like loosey goosey tits. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like long goosenecky. Oh, no. Our tits are gonna do that. Flippy eventually. floppies. Are you kidding? We have the. T we're, our boobs are so tiny. Yeah, it's true. They're not going. There was nowhere to go. They're we're, anchored. We're gonna be ninety-five year old perky titted. I old hope women. so. I don't know. Are there exercises you do for that? I don't know. I who, who cares? Um. Okay. What else did you learn? Okay. Tell me some more I things. learned actually. This is kind of crazy. Okay. Um, a girl was watching Cooking Channel with her eighty-year-old oh. dad. Did I tell you this? Yes. Oh, but never mind. No, it's a great story. Her 80-year-old dad, who's a Holocaust survivor, and saw my last name, which is Hardstark, which I thought was changed at Ellis Island. I didn't think anyone else had it but my immediate family, and freaked out because that is his mother's, was his mother's maiden name. So now she and I are going to meet up when I'm in New York, <gasps> and we're going to talk about it. She might be your cousin? She might, yeah, might be related to me, and I didn't know there were any other hard starts. And now, you found this out because her dad, her 80-year-old dad, is from a tiny town in Poland that your dad is family. Is right, from, right, that my dad's family is from. So you're, you're so related. I know. And the she's, like, hard super starts. cool, and we're, like, totally similar in a lot of ways. What's her deal? She sells very, very high-end ranges. Or she, like, works for a company that sells incredibly high-end ranges. Like, ovens and shit. And, like, like what they kind? do for, like, Food Network and stuff. No. Isn't that weird? Is it Gen Air? I don't remember. I hope she, It's a French company. Okay. I hope she doesn't turn out to be a psycho. I hope it's real. Well, if she's a psycho, she's your psycho. Right. She's related to you. What did you learn? What do you hate? What do you love? Um, I dropped my phone, and I cracked the screen. Which is the thing that I'm always when you know when you look over and someone's got a cracked screen and yeah. you're like what's going on in your life? What How happened? long? I just dropped it. Like I was just walking up to Did my you door. Fix it? Yeah, I got it fixed. Is it cheap? No, but I found a you no know, kind of. I found a guy. He's the iPhone doctor. He's in Beverly Hills or something. Uh -huh. You go to the back of this dude's house. What? You call him. You're like, I dropped my phone. This is the second time I have to do this because I dropped my phone twice. And because I just can't walk around with like a spider web crack on no. my phone. I cannot be that person. No, you're I don't broken. care how cracked it is. Everyone's like, clearly she got drunk one night. Oh, God. And just doesn't have her shit together enough to spend $150 to get that fixed. Ugh. She's like, I can still use it. That's not fair because I was running and it dropped. Well, people think you're drunk. I know. Though. I just, it, it, you would see that and you're just like, as soon as you see a cracked iPhone screen, you're like, oh, no, you have like a really, like you have like a couple hubcaps missing on your car. Right. You don't probably. remember that happening. Oh, That's how bad God. you are. No. So I was like, I can't have this. So, uh, but there's this guy for 80 bucks. Whoa. He'll just fix your iPhone. That's awesome. Bing bong. So if you're in the LA area and Sounds you have a illegal. broken. Uh, 
I think your warranty is moot at that point. Okay. But if you have a broken iPhone and you are walking around looking like you have your life in shambles, <laughs> start with your iPhone. Yeah. Is there a thing that you feel like if you don't do, your life is going to go to shit? Oh, like fix or whatever? Like shitty teeth. Like you just let your teeth go or like, and then it's just a slippery slope. And the next thing you know, you're just like, you're, you're shitting in a bush. I think if I don't go to the dentist every six months, my life is, I'm going to die of brain cancer. Can you imagine like the tooth metastasized? <laughs> like seven that, months. I feel like in. the teeth are the only place you don't get cancer. No, the, no, the, the, the bacteria goes into your brain. What? Yes, that's if you get a tooth infection, it's it's right next to your brain. It's gonna go into your brain. But that that's like if you get pink eye though, your your brain's gonna rot. No, I swear to God, the teeth are fucking connected to the brain bone. And Wait they, a minute, I is swear. this like your fluoride? Is this like your fluoride thing? No. You remember when you said that fluoride yes. caused like uh, like Lou Gehrig's disease? Yes. Okay, so no, is there but research it's, I mean, this? it's just a, everyone. It's just a thing. Dustin, do you Dustin? Know this? You heard this? No, that if you have listening. a brain, if you have a molar infection, it's adjacent to your brain, so you'll get a brain infection. And I don't die. know if that's, but that the decay will I, go into your brain. I know it's your, you get stomach problems, but that's probably obvious. All right. you, just having bad teeth affects your entire health. Too. Yeah, you guys get your get your teeth checked out. Take your feet off the dashboard. Take your feet off the dashboard. Can I can I have a gripe? Can I have a fuck that? Yeah. Oh, just thinking about it. I'm, I'm looking so up angry. tooth decay, brain damage. <laughs> When a cavity goes untreated for months or years, a decay eats into the center of the tooth and eventually enters the nerves. And wait, what side is this? What side is this? It's called Mouth Doctor. Mm. It's called it's called FreshEssentialsDentist.org for health. It travels through the bloodstream and into the brain. Res- the results of a serum inf- infection. MouthWash.org. <laughs> So, yeah, get your fucking teeth fixed, uh, you guys. Get your teeth fixed, you guys. Here's the thing. If you're worried about getting your teeth fixed, I just want you to know that w- if the more you wait, the more painful mm-hmm. and expensive it's going to be. The best time to get your teeth fixed is yesterday. So go tomorrow and fix your teeth. I'm one of those, like, if you start dating me, I'm going to make you go to the dentist in six months. Like, I'm going to make sure that you... I. In the, I'm gonna make you get an STD test before well, you fucking yeah. fuck, and you, and you have to go to the dentist. Is that because you don't want someone's dirt mouth on your poontang? I don't want dirty mouth. I don't want dirty dick. I don't your want poontang's directly related. To yeah, your brain. listen, I got sparkly clean up and down, so don't get your dirty fucking <laughs> don't get your trench mouth <laughs> and your trench dick <laughs> up in. My area. I think that that is fine. That's another thing: is everyone get tested for your st- yeah, stuff? Yeah, you don't have a you don't have to have sex with a guy, you guys, if you don't trust that he's right. And if he's not going to do that, if you're like, let's get STD, like we're just starting a relationship, and he's like, no, then yeah. you should dump him. Yeah, dump that's my advice for the life. Dump him. Do not go to the discotheque with him. <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> Can I gripe? Oh, please. A fuck that. I would love for you to. I was in the airport the other day. And I was traveling, it was a Saturday, which if you are a business traveler and you are forced to travel on a weekend, it is hell on earth. Mm -hmm. Because it's people who are not, or a Sunday, who are not accustomed to traveling. Start over, Saturday or Sunday? Either one, Saturday, weekend. If you're a business traveler and you're used to traveling Mm -hmm. Tuesday morning at 8 Mm a.m. when it's all other douchebag business travelers. Mm -hmm. But then you go on a Sunday and it's everyone with beach braids coming home from somewhere. It's like their first time flying. And they don't know how to fly. They don't know anything. And you're like, everything's taking twice as long. Yeah. get Put your bag up and get out of the aisle. Get out of the aisle of the plane. But this one, this is one thing that I, where I always want to like stop the plane and just be like, here's a lesson. (laughs) Everyone. I'm in 11A. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm deplaning. I've got to get my luggage out from up above me. Mm -hmm. Some dick shit behind you. 13B. Fuck you. Thinks he can. Nope. Thinks he can try to weasel his. I'm like, I will this elbow is you. how we're getting off of the plane. Yeah. This is like why the world isn't in chaos because it, people it, fucking follow rules what? and need to like learn how to stand in a line and wait the extra five wait seconds. Five seconds. So or I don't know, help you here. with your bag. A crazy idea. Help you get your bag down. There was a woman. I was trying to get my bag down, and there was a woman from two seats back who tried to sneak past me. And as I'm lifting my bag down. 
walks directly <gasps> under it. So I gently hit her on the head Good with my you. bag because I couldn't see her. Yeah. And then she looked at me like, how dare you? And I looked at her like, why are you walking underneath a everyone. suitcase that's coming down from an overhead? I hate everyone. What? And you know that I'm the most impatient person in the world. I can't fucking deal with lines and shit, but I will never try to scooch up and get nope. out of there early. No. I will dir- I will give everyone in front of me a fucking dirty look because they're taking so long. Sure. Like, get your bag and go. It's I not... Know. Unless but you announce, like, my flight to Amsterdam totally. is taking off. And people are like, hell go yes, ahead. girl, go ahead. Yes. But that that's my gripe of the day. Also, there was someone with bare feet on the seat next to me, and her Ew. feet touched me. And I didn't care, but I was like, Jordan would hate this. Their feet touched you? Yeah, because it was, like, kind of went on it, over to my side. Absolutely she not. She sitting on her feet. There was a woman on my flight, though. Okay, I was get. I was, okay, one more thing. I'm getting on this flight. I'm so tired. And... I was just grumpy and cranky and I was mm-hmm. like, I have a headache and I'm hungry, but all the plane food sounds gross. And I was like, what if I stood up in this plane and just screamed, I'm very cranky and tired. <laughs> <laughs> like, What would people do if I did that? If I just, Clap. If I just had an outburst. So I, I'm thinking about that. And I'm like, that'd be so I funny. Think you should do it. You know that I've handed, so- I've passed someone near me a cough drop before without them even asking for it. That like, was my cough drop. Did I say, do you have a cough drop? And then I handed them a cough drop. Yes. I gave you two more cough drops. Right. Because I had a cough too, but I'm fucking smart enough to bring some shit on the plane. Don't cough it up. But can uh, I tell you that after I thought that, what if I s- screamed, just stood up and screamed my journal thoughts into the air? <laughs> Later that flight, someone mm. had an outburst and no one knew what to do about it. What'd they do? They were watching a movie and we just hear from one and a half oh rows up, the, the, guy, the guy next to me and we looked at each other like, what are we going to do? We just hear What? What is that? It's a woman screaming at the TV. Screaming, laughing. Ha ha ha. Fuck you, Carl. At what? She was watching a Kevin Costner movie. Not, and she did it twice. And everyone in the plane looked at each other like, what do we do? What do we do? And she didn't do it like, there's no way she didn't know she was doing it. What the fuck? We will never know. I bet she's having a fun life. I think not giving a shit what people think about you is so much fun. Like, to do? that extent. What would you do? If she did that, nothing. No, what would you do if you didn't give a shit? Oh. Um, Sorry I, I griped about the plane so long. I'm really tired. No, I dig it. I I would just tell people what they're doing wrong. <laughs> that's dick. I would just say, uh, you should. No, that's not right. No. You would. Ha- half of your time doing that would might be directed at me. <laughs> Okay, I would tell strangers that they're, what they're doing wrong. I'm a lollygagger. But, I know I am. But you're not a stranger. You wouldn't... Mm. Like, I, I, when I'm at the air pl- airport, I'm like, here are the basic things to do. You can't fucking deviate from. You go to A to B to C. Like, this is how you do things. Right. And so many people are fucking going between A and B and C and D, and they're just making everyone else miserable. Well, would you do that in other settings? Like sure. At, like at the yogurt shop? Would you be like... Yeah. Like, but, but but flying is particularly stressful. Yeah, flying is a stressful, crazy thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, can I give a shout out to fucking JetBlue for upgrading me to first fucking class? Squeaky wheel. Squeaky wheel airline. I didn't squeak at all. Ah. I, I like got put in the exit row, which turned out to be like a like a like an army like tank wall with no window. And no armrest, so I was kind of having a panic attack, and I'm like, "How many Xanax do I have? Oh my god!" Wait, what? What was panicky about the not having a window? Just not, you know, like just not. I, I feel like at least I have some idea of what's going on around me, but just to be completely blocked off, you know, like just it'd be like dry. The- it'd be like being a passenger with with an eye mask on. Like I just need to know what's going on. But you do wear an eye mask on planes. I know, but I want to be able to take them off and look out the window. It was just scary. And then there was no armrest, so like I hadn't, and the and the door was a little further away, so there was nowhere to rest my head. Right. So I just said to the guy, "Hey, if there's another window seat available, or even aisle is fine. Just can you? Lo- I, I'd love to move." He was like, "Okay." And then the guy came over and goes, "Here you go, one A." And everyone around me we were all like, "Are you fucking what? serious?" And you guys, it's better. It's better up there. They had massaging seats, Stop which it. I couldn't figure out how to use. They Stop. gave you a birch box, which you know is what my dream. Fuck? Birch you box is a like a box. little thing of sample, like beauty samples that are like help you help you travel and fly. Right. They gave you f- great food. Ugh. I didn't have any booze, but you could have had booze. They they serve so much Chardonnay on first class. <laughs> like it's nine a.m. Everyone is hooked up with Chardonnay. Yeah. I don't even know how it happens. Well, it feels good too because whenever we get on a plane, Allie will 
count the number of middle-aged white men yeah. are on there. And if there's like a low number, then we like celebrate. And if there's a high number, right. then we're like, fuck. If it's fuck more the world. of a percentage, like if there's 16 seats yeah. and 80% of them are white males. and then Pasty we're like, white middle-aged yeah, males. Yeah, and the only woman is like one of their mistresses Wives, yeah. or something. You're like... That's a bummer. Yeah. Like, what are we doing, ladies? But I feel like I was helping the, our percentage, like, being a... Get up there. Hey, you know? And I looked like shit, so I was like, fuck you. Ever. I kind of felt embarrassed a little bit. Nah. Like, I didn't belong and everyone knew it. Nah. When you see someone in first class who looks, who looks like, not Rushy. well-pressed shirt, yeah. you're like, oh, they must be a musician. Yeah. That's what's cool. I looked bad. So what? I don't care. So I what? Slept with my mouth open. Fuck, fuck yeah. Fuck the 1%. 1A. Fuck the 1%. I'm the 1A percent. I feel like there needs to be some sort of coming of age movie where instead of like a princess or like a popper turning into a princess, it's just getting upgraded. <laughs> it's like someone fucks you from the back. Yeah. And they're like, we have this thing for you. And it's like a six hour movie of like what you do. Because you know you take more advantage of all those things when you're not rich. They gave us like this really nice box of like chocolates and stuff. Ugh, you can't sleep up there. No, you I tried not to. Sleep up I know. There. It was, it you was gotta soak it in. Amazing. Anyway, amazing. you guys, we fly a lot. Yeah. We fly so much. Do you know what I learned this what? week? What it's like to go to a meeting with a life coach. You went to a... Wait, you buried that lead? Yeah, sorry. Wait, you went to a life coach meeting? Yeah. Who, who, how did you find this person? Uh, a girlfriend of mine who posted something like on a, a, the secret girls forum that we're in that we can't talk about. Uh, do I know this girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. She, you do. We trust her. Yeah, okay. she's fucking cool and has her shit together. Oh, that's good. And she posted about how her life has changed so much since she's life goes. And I've seen her recently, and she looks great, and she looks happy, and what? like so. I was like immediately so called this chick. What did the life coach say? I thought you meant lifeguard at first. And I was really <laughs> confused. She's she was cool. She was like, I'm here to help you feel better about your life. I don't know. She's just like, you need to send me a to do list of like. Short term goals and long term goals. Every week we talk and decide what the next week is going to look like. Oh. What are my like long term goals? What do I want to What do I want to get out of this? And she's like cool and pretty and like nice. So I'm like, oh, your life seems cool. Does she go to the dentist? Probably. She has great skin. So I'm like, either. I mean, you take care of that shit. She looks like she wears really expensive face cream. Oh. Yeah. But Did she's you like, ask her how she how she budgets for her face cream? No, I should though. Does she do budgets? She'll do whatever you want. Like, what are you having you, trouble with? Do you pay her, like, let's do this for a month and then I'll peace out? Or you, like, sign up and you're like, I'm going to pay you for a year? No, you're like, let's do this for a month or a week or whatever. And there's a sliding scale, which made me feel like a piece of shit. Because I was like, how about this much? Ooh. You know, like, do you not want to help me as much now? Because you're like, I need help with my wealth management. I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> well, the thing is, so I keep bringing the same shit to my therapist. Like, I keep bringing the, right. like, I don't do anything. I hate myself. Right. So maybe this will work better. Are you, do you think you're going to phase out from therapist to life coach? I don't think I need therapy currently. I can okay. tell when I need it. Okay. Ther I think therapy isn't going to help me right now as much as help with direction. With, well. with like uh, organizational stuff. Right. Do life coaches clean your closet? Is that a no? <laughs> no. Oh, God. Damn it. I, think they, I think they help you tackle cleaning your closet. Okay. By making it seem like a like not overwhelmingly and like not making you want to go take a nap as soon as you think about it. Do life coaches advocate apps to help you get I, organized? Or, sure. Or do you think that they're like, don't use an app because then you won't need me? Oh, no. I think they're all about that. They're all about like, here's your tools. Yeah. I'm really That's excited. Handy. I'm excited. That's kind of nice because sometimes when you ask your friends to be life coaches, you don't necessarily want to burden them with that. Yeah. And you don't know if they have good advice. Right. Because a lot it, of times friends are life coaches. Yeah. It's like, no, man, you got to ask your agent to negotiate more for you. Uh, no, your reel would be great. You just have to put it together. You know um, what I mean? She has, like, I'm if the fact that I'm paying her to do it feels good because it's like, it's her job to make. And she's right. like, you will not recognize your life in 90 days from now. And I'm like, I don't want to recognize my life anymore. Please help me. Dang. I know. Them some tall ass claims. So let's check back in 90 days and see how. I'm doing. You know what? Yeah, let's check back. Also, I want a before picture of her life. Like, how great would it be if she was like, you know, when you see those pictures of shelter dogs? Mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, I love we found Skippy. Those. He was a matted mess. And then look what we found underneath. Right. And then he's like smiling and laying in the flowers. Like, how how great would it be if she did that? But with people, <laughs> there's just like Fritos Can on I tell a coffee you that table. I put makeup on to, on my first meeting because I was like, she does not need to see what a fucking mess I am. <laughs> 
I put makeup and a dress on because I was like, normally I would just leave the house looking like shit. But let me just. Was this your hope is you show up and she's like, fuck, what? you don't. You're fine. You don't need me. How, where did you get that dress? I just didn't. I didn't want to look the way I looked in first class where like I'm like a fucking charity case that needs a skin needs more money to, on skincare and less money on eating out. I don't think getting bumped to first class is the same as like a shelter dog, though. Do yeah. you think so? No. What if you could stick your face out of an airplane and enjoy like a dog and just go a little... That would be fun. Wouldn't that be great? Yes. Drool on other passengers? What's another thing uh, that you love? Well, what's something I love? Okay, I love the iPhone doctor. I hate it when people sneak up behind you. Um, what else do I hate? Um, I'm not a huge fan of fake leather, but real leather makes me feel bad. Mm, nobody what? knows the difference, really. Uh, Don't Do they? Synthetic leather leather peels all the time, but real leather is made out of alive animal skins that were once alive that are not alive yeah, anymore. Yeah, but you eat animals. I know. I think I should eat less of them. But it's not like you have to carry a steak around with you. I do carry a steak around <laughs> with me. I usually stuff in the For front me. of my pants. For when I start crying on an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just gently I gently pack the my fupa area with a nice oh. room temperature steak. Oh. Do you know that panis is a real word? No. Panis, I thought was a joke word, but I am told by someone in medical school. What is it? It is the medical term for the flap of skin that overhangs the weenus <gasps> in obese individuals. Oh my god! And I was told this by someone who is studying anatomy, and I was like, I thought panis well, was just like who created that was like saying fupa. Like I didn't think that it was a real word. Do you think there's a Dr. Fred Panis out there who was oh, like hating life? I coined that. No, he's oh. the one who coined it. That's a stupid name because it's so close to an act. The I know. same thing. I know it really is. But Dr. now we Fred know this. Panis is I crying. Really should fact check that because <laughs> I took that to be real. You know what? That's not fun though. Slumber party is not a fact checking thing. We have our listeners to email oh, us no. and say and tell us right what we're doing. Right, wrong. listeners. Thank you for emailing us and telling us that we are on occasion. On occasion, incorrect. Shockingly. I'm really excited to see your 90 day turnaround. This me is too. like a, this reminds me of like a, um, when you're get really jazzed about an infomercial and like, you know what I get excited about hmm. is the infomercials that involve cleaning silver or refinishing wood. What? You don't, have you ever seen those? <laughs> yes, but why it's those? Tits. Cause it's like, look at this tarnished oh. silver. And then they put it, they put some goop on it and you're like, yes, I want that. I want to do that. <laughs> I want to clean some silver. That, that's interesting. Do you never get jazzed about that? No. Oh, you know what I get jazzed about? What? And I'm really obsessed with this. Um, like really easy to put away stackable Tupperware. Yeah. Like look how small this box of Tupperware can become. <gasps> And it's, it's just Russian dolls of Tupperware. Yeah, and it just becomes invisible. Just uh, like a MC Escher painting of Tupperware. Oh, I'm so into that. Does that that's a thing that you buy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like once a year everyone should go through and see how much orphan Tupperware they have. And oh just yeah. Match those lids out. up. I know. I oh. think I only have lids. Also, plastic's bad for you. Plastic's so bad for you. Oh, no. You know what? One thing else that I learned. Yeah. I we live in this city. It's a five bazillion people. It's like actually like eighteen million or something in the greater Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm. We have like four trees. Mm -hmm. It's very as asphaltic. Mm -hmm. That's not a word. <laughs> but um, so I'm like, oh, the you know how the whole world is like this, and we're all on top of each other, and we're mm -hmm. incredibly overpopulated. Which I granted, are we are reproducing at an exponential rate not you and i well not you and i <laughs> but um flying over the rest of the country yeah. driving through the rest of the country i'm like shit Everyone we got a lot of space space yeah so i don't know you guys there's one so thing tired can you do me a favor yeah really quickly yeah and here's something i hate okay. so much sure i fucking hate twitter oh i'm gonna hand you my phone and you're okay. gonna delete my twitter <gasps> Please, please delete my fucking Twitter. No, I fucking hate it. I can't it. do that. Please delete my Twitter. No, 
I can't why? Do that because then what if you're like, oh, I shouldn't have deleted my Twitter. I deleted. Well, that's why Twitter. I'm making you do it. Why don't you change your password? Why don't I change your? I change. No, your, because then there's still all this stupid content there that I keep deleting. I changed Dustin's password, and he had a little break from it. I hate Twitter. But then why you do don't you give me followers? Me what, and then like, and then tell me this. what you hate about. It. You know what? <sighs> Steve Agee did this. He had a million followers, and he's like, I don't get anything done. He deleted it. I don't have it. a million followers. And then he was like, oh. It's just so stupid because I started it so late that I don't have a lot of followers. And, you know, people, when they hire you for the jobs that we get hired for, sometimes fucking check that. And they're sometimes? like, oh, she only All always. And like the Allie and Georgia one has a lot on yeah, it, but I'm mine doesn't. doesn't. And I'm not good at it. And I'm fine with that. You're great at no, it. No, I'm not. I just got an e- We just got an email from someone who was like, hey, that tweet you just wrote. What? You should take it down. What? I said something about the true detective, uh, little the kid. The casting oh, was bad because it was. I wasn't saying this kid was stupid, but the casting was like terrible. And well, he's like, "Hey, he's 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 just a kid. He's on oh, Twitter." God. And I'm like, "Okay, I don't want anyone to think that I'm making fun of a kid because I'm not." Well, so I deleted it. I just del- I don't. Like you know it. what? You made fun of a child actor, so you were <laughs> you were helping him have a normal course of ego. Um, I right. did not watch True Detective. I don't. I hear that it was very infuriating, and I don't really care. Is that terrible? All right. Should we l- end on one thing we love? Uh, that is a that's a capital idea. Um, sorry, I'm so tired. No, it's fine. Let me think of a thing. You go okay. first. All right. The thing that I love. What? Nothing. Oh, you just looked at me like you had something to say. No, I was listening. To you. Oh, <laughs> I'm so tired. The thing that I love. Yes. So much I want to fuck is when I order something off like Amazon or you buy something and it needs like some assembly required. What? I fucking love some assembly required. Are you pranking me right now? No. And I have my like, I love using my <laughs> my electric drill. That's cool. 